Thank you for your time, everyone. Um, as I uh, just uh, found out, our first presentation was at um, the Gluten and Allergy Free Show. And I think for the first day, we stood there and no one spoke to us at all apart from Di. And uh, six months later, by the time we got to Chemex Show, which is the second show that we did, we were absolutely snowed under. We could hardly keep up with the business because by then, uh, a number of nutritionists had realised the potential of the, of the technology, had found out for themselves, and uh, it's been a bit of a role since then. Interestingly, it's nutritionists that are leading the way, uh, whereas um, doctors are trying to catch up with the work that we've been developing over the last 10 years. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a bit of an insight into probiotics generally, so you get a feel of uh, the delivery systems. Uh, I'm going to try and be as broad as possible, but obviously, uh, to, uh, once I've given you the general overview, I'll be talking about our own technology and how that's developed and why that's different. <coughs> so, we are uh, a probiotic company that specialises in delivering live bacterial inoculants on a perfect substrate. I'll give you some more detail on that as we go on, but I'll give you a bit of the brief history first, so you know it's not something that's just been dreamt up. We've been developing this for over 24 years now um, and originally it was used within agriculture. Uh, my basic training was as a military nurse and I went into farming and I was unhappy with using hormone and steroid implants into animals ears to make them grow and I thought there must be a better way than this. Uh, I was also concerned about lacing animal feeds with antibiotics on a continual basis and it just seemed wrong. Um, that doesn't, I don't mean to say from that that I was non-commercial or that I was looking for a purist way forward, but this seemed to be very extreme. So the idea was to use the technology, to, or use the uh, long historical technology of germinating grain to get an increase in feed value from that grain to feed to animals. The trouble is that once you do that, within a week to ten days, the grain starts to become a mouldy mess. So the original technology was to use a bacterial cocktail to preserve that grain so that we could have a shelf life of about uh, 8 to 12 weeks and then we could feed that um, product to the animals um, to get um, a clean food into them. What we found was that the bacterial cocktails that we were using and developing were having a beneficial effect over and above the feed value. And we also found that the liquid discharge from that process was also having the same beneficial effect um, and we began to measure that. One day I was a sensible farmer buying good quality stock and then I put my nursing hat on, went into the market, was buying all sorts of animals that were about to be, to be dead within 24, 48 hours and you could turn the situation around. So I experimented on how I could use this to uh, generally increase the animals, uh, young animals' health and to put them on the road to recovery. So that was the original learning blocks. Um, what we've had to do though uh, is to make a, a step away from the animal studies through to people. Now I won't bore you with the first 10 years but in essence we learnt about the technology and about 10 years ago some very eminent vets said Barry this will work for people and you've got to try and make the step. So Anne and I said okay we'll give it two years and an amount of money and that was 10 years ago, and a lot more money, but we've actually been trying to do that to prove that what we'd found out agriculturally and with the vets would work for people. Um, so 10 years ago we started to do um, studies with King's College London. I'll give you some more detail about that in a minute, but in essence uh, we had to refine the process so that it was very, very clean indeed. The agricultural process, obviously you'd be using grains that were not sterile, uh, you'd put in the bacterial cocktail that we would like, but there could be other bacteria and yeast within it. So we now had to be extremely refined for it to be uh, used in an NHS uh, quality clinical trial. So the process was refined so that we could extract from the grain um, a perfect uh, nutrition for the bacteria. We would then sterilise that broth, which is all part of our patented process. We would then have the perfect food, or an agar effectively, for the bacteria. We would then lace it with the bacteria. We then did QA to ensure that only our bacteria were there and that there were no other bacteria or contaminants within the product. And the QA has always been outsourced, so we are policed separately. So we then had a very clean, pure system 
where we knew we had exactly the right food for the bacteria and exactly our four bacteria at exactly the count that we wanted with zero contamination. And uh, it's that that we then put to, to um, King's College to start the study. Uh, so we've got a high quality evaluation completed at King's. It took um, uh, about six years in preparation. Um, so you had to, initially we applied to the Wellcome Trust for Funds to do this. It took us nearly two years to do that and we failed at the very last hurdle. Uh, and they said there wasn't enough in vitro work. So we'll show you some more in vitro work now. But our champion, Professor Ingvar Bajansson, uh, whilst I was very disappointed, was delighted because he said, well, you've just been reviewed by one of the world's leading uh, medical authorities, uh, a peer review that hasn't questioned the science at all. So I believe that we can now do this through um, King's, through the NHS Trust. <coughs> so that two year passed and we had another three to four years where we had to develop um, protocols, health and safety, um, ethics committee approval, uh, anti uh, antibiotic resistance or last uh, antibiotics of last resort to ensure that uh, our bacterial cocktail could be controlled. And eventually the study started. It was going to last two years. It lasted three and a half. It's just completed. So that um, study will be presented at the Digestive Diseases Week in, in uh, San Diego on the 22nd of May. So I'll give you a bit of an insight into that. You'll be the first to hear about that. Um, I can't give you the, all of the detail, all of the disclosure, but I think there's been bits and pieces that have leaked to the press, so I can tell you about that. Um, <coughs> so I should also point out that although the IBS study is complete, um, halfway through, the medical team asked if they could start an IBD study. You'll know that that will be for Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, and that's half recruited at the moment. And there's been some more development on the study side post the first result, which I'll tell you about in a moment. So we're preparing to uh, change our R&D company to commercial. So we're hoping to, um, for a, a big development phase through this, this year, so the product gets out there and we can perhaps return some of our funds to the shareholders. Okay, trip on. Uh, I'll put this, this slide up first because I need to get this question out of the way first because whenever I talk to anyone about probiotics, everybody, somebody puts their hands up and says, what's the number? And um, our philosophy is it's not the number that counts, it's what the number can do that counts. So here's our number, 10 billion or in excess of live bacteria per 50 mil shot. That's about the average uh, amount required for a treatment. And um, the product is uh, non-dairy, non it's gluten-free, um, and it's a, a very gentle system. We have uh, thousands of people that have been on this product now, and to our knowledge there's been no detrimental effect with any patient. Um, so this is the start point of uh, the point about probiotics generally, and so that you get an understanding of our stance and what we're trying to develop. There are two ways at the moment, in essence, I mean there's some exceptions, but in main, there are two ways to deliver a, a bacteria or probiotic. The first way is as a, a yoghurt, and I can assure you that um, their first priority is to make yoghurt. They won't be using the same bacteria each time, they'll be buying the cheapest bacteria they can to make that yoghurt, and that's designed to extend the milk market opportunity, and it gives the milk some shelf life and they hang the hat on it because there's bacteria in it, so therefore it must be a probiotic. The second way, main way of delivering bacteria is in freeze-dried form, and you can have uh, single bacterias and sometimes up to 10 or 12 bacterias in massive numbers in sachets or capsules um, in order to take that on board as a supposed live bacteria. What the freeze-dried ma uh, manufacturers won't tell you is in order to make them dry, They've been uh, taken to minus 80 degrees, and that's very cold indeed. And there's no way that they can even imbibe for about three to four hours. So all that happens is there's a massive attrition rate as that goes through the system. And there's very little chance of those bacteria establishing high up. So the third way of delivering is the way that we do it, which is live bacteria on a perfect substrate that are able to multiply within 10 to 15 minutes coming into the system. And we've done some in vitro work to show that. So that's in essence the three main ways to deliver. There are some exceptions. 
There are one or two um, yogurts that do use the same bacteria all the time. Um, we're not sure whether they would actually re-inoculate, but you should be aware that every single batch that we make is from core stock. There's no re-inoculation, so there can be no mutation. Okay, would you like to move on in? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, thanks. So, um, we're in an advanced next ge generation food supplement at the moment, because that's the category we're in. It's uh, extract of germinated barley and bacteria. It's categorized as a food. We have got a regulatory nightmare ahead of us, because at the moment we're sitting with a food product that has a very clear medical effect and has been proven to have that, not by us as a company, but independently by the NHS. So we're, we've got a, a program uh, that we're putting forward to find out what our regulatory position might be post the studies. It's a water-based drink, a high concentrate of four, high concentration of four alive active bacteria. We have a, a specialist process um, where we have pairs of bacteria being grown. And the reason for that is that we have two bacteria that perform very well at pH 7 on our food substrate. They bring the pH down to about 4.2. They live quite happily in harmony together. Then there's another bacteria that we'd very much like to have in the cocktail, but it won't work at pH 7. So we use a facilitating bacteria that brings the pH down from about 7 to about 5, generates the condition for the bacteria that we actually want. It then drops down to about uh, 4.2 and uh, as a reward, it effectively destroys the facilitator. So within our cocktail, we have three bacteria that are a minimum, minimum count of 10 to the seven, and we have one bacteria that's in the very low count that's been destroyed, but it's aided the process. Uh, <coughs> Non-dairy and gluten-free. Non-dairy because it's water-based. Gluten-free, courtesy of nutritionists, who said to us a year ago, when we had contains gluten, because we presumed from uh, the fact that it was a barley base, there probably is some gluten in there, so we wanted to be upfront. But the nutritionist said it's really important that there's no gluten. And we said, well, we haven't actually done tests on that, but it's very minimal amounts. We'd better test it. It's about the only thing I hadn't tested because I've been focused entirely on bacteria. So we sent away our samples to um, RSSL Reading, which is a specialist laboratory. They did the gluten tests on the product, and we it transpires that one of the samples we sent in had uh, about 14 parts per million in it, and uh, three samples had less than five, which basically means undetectable. And as nutritionists, you'll know that it has to be under 20 parts per million to be gluten-free. So it's gluten-free. So we then had to say, well, why is that if we've got barley? And there's a number of reasons for it. One is it's a very, very small amount of uh, extract of germinated barley, Barley has less gluten than wheat anyway. It also has um, uh, a denaturing process that it goes through on our process, and it's threefold. So the first thing that happens is we denature it by germination, so that changes the amino acid structure. The second thing that happens is we sterilize it so that we ensure there's no contamination, which again denatures any gluten that might be there. And then, although we can't prove this, we're pretty sure that we then get ingestion by the bacteria. So that again, that's a further denaturing. But anyway, when you test it, it's not there. So don't worry about the gluten side. Tested for over four years at King's College Hospital. And we say we're the best of science and nature combined on the basis that um, the ingredients of the product are the extract of germinated barley and our, ba and our bacteria. And with the exception of uh, uh, a very small amount of preservative, that's the product, um, uh, straight and simple. Do you want to move on, Amy? <coughs> I'd have to give Anne a minute now just to uh, pick up on a short video. I understand this is quite simplistic, for, uh, but it tells a story and uh, gives me a chance to uh, catch my breath. More and more of us are choosing to include probiotics in our daily diets. But what goes into them and how do they work? Most of the probiotics you can buy today are either dairy-based, such as yogurts and milk drinks, which contain only a single type of probiotic and have to be bought fresh each week because they have a short shelf life, or capsules that, although contain multiple varieties of freeze-dried probiotic bacteria,
only work once slowly reactivated through rehydration. A tricky process in the hostile environment of your stomach for those bacteria that have already been weakened or even destroyed during the freeze-drying process. In fact, when you swallow either of these types of products, your body treats them as a food. The yogurt or capsule reaches your stomach where you produce digestive juices and enzymes to break them down. This is not great for the probiotic bacteria as these acids and enzymes can also break them down before they get a chance to reach the lower parts of your digestive system where you need them to be for them to work. With this in mind, we set out to produce a better probiotic, combining the best of science with all the good things nature has to offer. The result is a completely new breakthrough probiotic drink called Simprove. Unlike other probiotics, Simprove contains live, activated bacteria, just like the yogurt drinks, but it also contains multiple varieties of probiotic, like the capsules. The live, activated probiotic bacteria in Simprove are effective the moment it's swallowed. And because Simprove is a drink, it passes straight through the hostile environment of your stomach safely to the lower parts of your digestive system, where the probiotics can get to work. Simprove is based on an extract of germinated barley, to which we add four varieties of probiotic bacteria. The extract providing a perfect food for the bacteria to thrive. You can keep Simprove in your fridge for up to five months. There are no artificial colors, flavors or sweeteners, and Simprove is lactose-free. Now, adding a probiotic to your diet couldn't be easier. And when you drink Simprove, you're giving probiotics the best possible chance of working for you. Simprove. Combining the best of science and nature. Okay, this is a, a short video that we have on our website, um, which has been cleared by the MH MHRA as something that we're allowed to say to the public. Um, we're very conscious of the fact that our website says very little, uh, and that's in order to be compliant and we're intent on staying compliant. There'll be, um, you may well be aware that there are probiotic companies that are claiming that their te technology does all sorts of things for IBS and IBD. You'll find that on their packaging they are compliant and you'll find that their website is probably in the Canary Islands or, or um, abroad so that they can uh, sidestep the legislation. What we're intent on doing is, be is being absolutely regularised and to do everything within the rules of the UK. And so our uh, remit will be to uh, keep uh, the, the website to the consumer correct and then we'll probably have a specialist website that nutritionists and doctors can click into to get the scientific side of the equation. The scientific side of the equation is effectively talking about Simprove, the R&D company as opposed to the product and that's all okay. I can give you a bit more of an insight as long as I don't write it down for you. So I uh, happily can give you a bit more information today than you would normally get from our very bland and compliant website. So uh, to cover some points that I may have already covered, if I, because I waffle on a bit, if I've covered it all once I'll flick through quickly. Um, so they're alive and ready to work, multi-strained, lactobacillus species, four varieties, fast acting. The fast acting uh, was uh, proven a long time ago when, uh, I'm sorry to have to tell you that we had to sacrifice some chicks to uh, do some work to uh, find out whether we'd managed to establish the bacterial cocktail. I had a very serious problem on a very, very large poultry farm where the uh, mortality rate had risen to in excess of 30%. We were pretty sure that I'm confident that our technology could do something. The farm agreed to do uh, uh, to su supply chicks for us for testing. So um, at this time, again going back to why I was dissatisfied, and still is today by the way, first thing that happens is all chicks get an antibiotic dose. Uh, there was a four-day break, then for one day, a very small amount of uh, what was called lactosin, now Simprove, went into one set of chicks and another set of chicks um, had, did, had, did not have it. And then 24 hours after that, they were sacrificed and we actually did bacterial counts. And we established that there's a very clear, massively increased bacterial flora within those who are on the product. And we also found that the multiplication was as high as the crop. So it multiplies very, very quickly at the very start of the system. So that was the first thing we did uh, uh, way back, sort of 10 years ago. Um, so it travels safely through. 
And the reason it goes uh, through uh, without triggering dry digestion is that we advise um, the patients, clients, I should perhaps point out at this point that 98% of the people who buy our product are very unwell indeed. So um, I keep on slipping into patients because it, we're forced into this position by people who had exited the studies at King's wanting product because it made them better. So that's how we came into it. Uh, but the, the rationale behind it not triggering digestion is if you take the product first thing in the morning, morning it's water-based, therefore goes through the system very quickly. Uh, if you have your breakfast five, ten minutes after, the digestive juices haven't started, so there's been uh, less of an attack on the bacteria and therefore more chance of them establishing high up. Trip on any? So stable for four months. Um, this is a new slide because we were five months refrigerated, but we've now <coughs> completed uh, another six months test uh, to show that the bacteria are fine to ambient. Obviously, you've got to keep in the fridge when it's open, but we're now okay ambient for four months. We're evidence-based. We've got the uh, trial completed. We've got IBD underway, and uh, we are now starting within a matter of weeks a diverticular study. So to give you some idea how that worked, uh, when uh, Professor Bajanson first became interested in what we're doing, he wanted to do an IBD study, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. And I felt that that was too high a hurdle for my technology. These are very, very ill people with a life-threatening disease. My experience um, agriculturally was that it would help with general digestive upsets, and I was uh, more comfortable in the IBS area. We only got halfway through the study of IBS, which Prof eventually agreed he would do in, in preference to IBD, and the medical team asked if they could do an IBD study as well. So that's another 200 patients that are half recruited at the moment. They're split between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's with a placebo group. Uh, and that's still being recruited. And to give you some idea how it can accelerate once you, the penny drops and people realise it's working, and it took me 10 years to get the penny to drop with the professor, was that on the day that he phoned me with the results on IBS, I pointed out to him that there was at least 20 or 30 patients that were using this product to resolve diverticular disease or to manage it, and were using that instead of an antibiotic. And obviously I was chuffed to hear the result, and he um, listened to what I had to say, and that was at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And at 11 o'clock the next morning, in principle, a diverticular study had been agreed with the head of department. Ten weeks down the line, the protocol has been agreed. A week ago, they started to recruit the doctor for another two-year study on this indication. So 10 years for the first study, 24 hours for the second. But now they know it works. So it takes a long time to get there. So we've got a unique delivery system. We've trademarked that because that's the point that we want to try and get across, that um, we are effectively a delivery system to the extent that we believe that long-term the clinicians could choose the bacteria that they would like us to deliver to resolve a specific problem. Now that's way over my head. That's my just lay understanding of it. But I'm as sure as I can be that people who specialise in digestive disorders will want specific bacteria delivered <coughs> to specific parts of the digestive tract and this system can do it. And there's all sorts of ways of refining it. So it's uh, on its own natural food. Um, there's quite a lot of talk about prebiotics. This is another part of the equation. I am, I mean, I'm an optimist by nature and if someone's got some proof on prebiotics, fine. My sort of feeling in, as a layman is that if you give uh, someone a food for bacteria, it will feed all the bacteria. If it's, a, if it's high in iron so that it might feed a particular bacteria that they're targeting, it's by chance. What we do is we are absolutely certain that our food substrate, the extract, the prebiotic, is exactly what our bacteria need to survive. And the reason that we know that is we have a maintained number of bacteria for the full four month slash five month period of its shelf life. So it's exactly the same count all the way. Now it's not stable. What's happening is there's a die off and rebirth rate at the same rate that gives you the same count for five months. And that's because we know our prebiotic, that's why we know our prebiotic is so specific and effective. So um, naturally occurring, said all that. Uh, unique group, uh, said all that, said all that. Yep. So why do people drink it? Okay, the initial target group was for IBS, as I've just explained. But you must keep in mind that um, IBS 
Um, it's a very difficult thing to diagnose and it's a very broad range of symptoms. So there's a whole list, I probably would never remember it all, but it could be diarrhea, constipation, swinging between the two, bloating, pain, distension, <coughs> loss of sleep, uh, screwed up <coughs> menstrual cycles, loss of fertility in a certain age group within women. It's a, it can be very serious. Um, and each one of those symptoms at the moment is targeted, if the clinician chooses to target it, with an individual drug to resolve that individual problem. And some of those things are very aggressive. So there'll be things for diarrhea, constipation, there'll be antidepressants, there'll be at the extreme end, um, what am I looking for? The, uh, they put, oh, I've forgotten, it'll come back to me in a minute. But there are some, the, the, the treatments that are, um, that are, that are prescribable, Steroids, I was thinking of. Sorry, thanks, Annie. So, uh, steroids at the extreme end, which people don't know are wrong and don't want to do, and yet that's what's available to the clinicians at the moment. So they're targeting individual bits of it all the time and trying to pick out, if you like, the worst symptom. Now, as nutritionists, it could be just a symptom, a bit of constipation, a bit of diarrhoea, and obviously you can use this technology for it. But the key thing about what this does is it balances the whole system so it functions well, and performs at its best. It will perform, it will um, be able to make the best use of the nutrition that's being taken on board and balance your um, digestive tract in a natural way. So apart from the individual uh, signs and symptoms, you have uh, the, this whole um, grouping of IBS. And this is why we're obviously very proud of our result because IBS is this huge mix of, uh, of uh, problems that people can have and the study was, was, uh, uh, that, we, that was run by the NHS was only on patients that had already failed third and fourth line treatments by their GP, so what they called heart sink patients. So they've been referred to uh, a centre of excellence like King's and they are generally told there isn't a treatment unless you want to go on some of these very aggressive treatments, manage your lifestyle, manage your diet. Um, or you can go on this study. So the study, that, the group that was chosen, over 400 patients were screened for over three hours each in order to get to 186 that came onto the study, um, were all people who had the very worst type of IBS, people who were often housebound because of the problem. So I would argue that if we can do it on the most difficult patients, this is probably why we get what we call one bottle resolution with people who have lesser problems or a few signs and symptoms. So uh, the uh, medical team are effectively saying you need 90 days on this uh, uh, product to reset your system, but we also know that um, people who've got a minor problem can do so within 24 to 48 hours. So it's a tool to be used uh, with common sense. Uh, if you have got specific problems, but you want to make sure you have all the good bacteria. Yes, but don't tell anyone, because I'll never be able to make it fast enough <laughs> at the moment. So at the moment, we know that we're working specifically on people who are very unwell. I would say that 98% of our, uh, our clients are people who've got IBS or IBD. There's a few that have tweaked that you can use it as a maintenance and that you can potentially um, avoid the problem in the first place. Uh, so that's another area, and it's not what we're discussing today, but yes, it's, and there, might, there might be a lesser version. I mean, I think that you, Di will probably point out to you that she has a number of her clients who take a half dose to have a maintenance dose. But as the prof said to me, that's not proven. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so I can explain that to you. Um, when the prophet announced the result, he said 90 days will resolve the problem, you may need another 90 days in, within the year. So I said to him, well, a lot of our patients are using it at half rate. And he said, are you telling them to do that? And I said, no, I said, they're just doing it by themselves. He said, well, don't tell them to do it. And I said, why? He said, because you've just spent 10 years with me making sure we've got proven science, and now you're guessing. He said, I know that at this dose, on 90 days, you will reset your system, or you've got a 60 to 70% chance of resetting your system. He said, and if you do that, you're guessing. He said, if the, if the public's guessing, that's fine. 
but it does make common sense. It comes back to one, one end is the extreme science, the other bit is common sense. That you probably could maintain your system once you've uh, got yourself right. The inflammatory bowel disease um, is, uh, as I say, partially recruited, and we expect to get the result towards the end of uh, this year or early part of next. Uh, the diverticular study, um, the doctor's being recruited at the moment, they expect to start that study, another 200 patients within about eight to 10 weeks. So this is an interesting thing that I brought out from the commercial side of what we're doing, so that you get some idea of the size of um, the problem. I reckon it's one in five of our IBS, lesser symptoms to the more extreme end. Uh, there's, there's, the cause is, is, is not known. Uh, there are no cures, so even our system, which actually addresses all of the symptoms, is managing it, and it's it, quite likely that it will come back uh, with people who are prone to this type of problem. Uh, the current drugs I've already covered are, uh, can be very aggressive indeed. Um, and the effect are on the individual, we've, we know of people who are, as I've said, housebound, uh, I mean running to the toilet uh, 20 to 30 times a day, um, and total loss of confidence. And then if you look at that on a, an economic scale, uh, nationally, it's, it's tens of, of millions that are lost to the, to, the, to the working week for people being unwell. It's the biggest cause of, of being away from work, not colds and flus, but uh, uh, digestive upsets. Okay, Annie? There's a little sign from our, our uh, production plant, the home of Simproof. So uh, people are using it for um, specific digestive conditions, which are IBS, IBD, diverticular disease, and also symptoms. Uh, people are using it as a support and maintenance. There are a few, but a tiny amount, which is the point you're making. Um, the idea is that it balances the system uh, and we're replenishing uh, the gut flora with um, new bacteria. And this leads on to another area that would be massive for nutritionists, and that's following antibiotic treatment, because at the moment uh, that's the main um, uh, product that is used, or a whole range of antibiotics used by doctors to resolve a whole line of problems, and you all know that this will completely wipe out the gut flora. Now potentially this gives you an opportunity to gain control and also not to waste this amazing antibiotic technology, which is brilliant, but it's being squandered. So my argument would be that um, Obviously, there are antibiotics required for certain disease problems. What's inclined to happen, particularly in the elderly, when it doesn't quite work and they become ill again, another antibiotic goes in and another and another, and you have this downward spiral of ill health. What I would argue, and something that nutritionists are already doing, verified by dye, that when the patient comes to you and they've had an antibiotic treatment and they're still not quite right, you then can gain control and effectively re-farm the gut flora with this technology so that you don't need second, third and fourth treatments of antibiotics, so you actually gain control. So that way it will save the antibiotics and they won't be wasted so rapidly. <coughs> so if you trip on any, and that was what this point's about. Oh, back again. It was a bit faster. It's all right, it's just, I've, I've, I've said that anyway, it's no problem. So that slide was saying that antibiotics um, will have wiped out your system. So, uh, why do people drink it? Well, uh, it's a health tool, and it's for people to use in a common sense way, uh, either with a problem or to avoid a problem or post-antibiotic treatment. Um, and we believe that there's obviously some evidence that it supports the immune system, which all, all probiotic companies are saying. Um, I prefer not to go too far down that road, because uh, so that you're aware, we uh, have a remit within the company to do absolutely every single stage on proof. So the only thing that I can say for absolute certainty is that we have a, a highly statistically beneficial effect on people with IBS, i.e. all those symptoms. And although there's all sorts of other common sense things in it, like the immune system will probably be boosted, your circulatory system might be boosted, we want to do it step at a time and prove each point. So we're going to do IBS first, then IBD, then diverticular disease, post-antibiotic studies, C. diff, uh, 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 circulation, um, skin problems. We get this feedback from all of these different uh, these other areas, 
but we want to try and make our steps one at a time and prove them one at a time scientifically. Next one, Annie. So, start of your day. Uh, easy to include in, the root, in your daily routine. On an empty stomach, as I uh, described. A mil per kilo of body weight. Body weight. Um, uh, there's a measuring cup provided, and you can have your breakfast straight after. There's no constraints other than that. We do know that people take the product at any time through the day, particularly on bloating. So people know that if they've got this bloating problem, if they have a quick slug of Simproof, it'll probably resolve it very quickly at any time through the day. Um, and again, uh, that's something we have a lot of experience from agriculturally, which is another long story I'll tell you about another day. Right, next step, Penny. So uh, this was uh, to cover the point that the Wellcome Trust said you hadn't done enough in vitro work. We'd already started the study um, at King's. We chatted to the medical team about uh, trying to prove some of our theories in vitro so that we had some, um, some power behind the argument. And I said, it's my view that our bacteria, when they're in a live and activated form at this pH with a food supply with them, that they will survive the pH, the low pH of the stomach. The reason I was fairly confident about that was that one of the biggest areas I worked in prior to coming to people was with calves. And with calves, the pH in the stomach can come down to as low as one because the only source of nutrition is mum's milk and that requires an acidic environment to digest it. And we were getting hugely positive results on calves and resolving bloating problems. Now, bloating within calves kills the animal because it switches the heart off. So I said to the medical team, well, what about this? And they said, well, it'd be a brave man who does it at pH 3. So we took our product. We took uh, a single line dairy yogurt based product and we took a very expensive multi strain freeze dried bacteria. We set them at the same levels and we put them on plates at pH 3. You'll see that the freeze dry product plummeted, um, just dropped away in three to four hours, as did the dairy product. Interestingly, the relatively inexpensive single line uh, dairy product still was detectable at uh, five, six hours. The freeze dried one was wiped out. Simprove tickled along there for a period of time and at the five to six hour point actually started to multiply at pH three. Now, these type of in vitro uh, trials actually ask more questions than they give answers because this is actually an unrealistic situation. The pH uh, uh, exposure to p low pH is likely to be something between 20 minutes, maybe an hour. However, when it's passed through the stomach, there's a whole other range of volatility that's running through the digestive tract with bile salts and digestive juices and the like. And we would argue that, again, if our bacteria are surviving the first stage, they've got more chance of surviving the second stage. So that's a little bit of in vitro work. And uh, we now come on to the, the study result, really. So we've put up 90 days as a gold standard because that was the length of the study. Um, it was run, as I told you, over th uh, three to four years. Um, and the medical team released information ahead of the paper, which is a very interesting twist and to do with this um, area of regulation as, as food as opposed to drug. So if you finish a study at this standard, this is full clinical standards at Rome 3 criterion, then in general what happens is no one tells anyone and then they start phase 3 studies. And the reason for that is because in general it's a drug and there's going to be downsides. And they have to rack out the numbers to do thousands of people. But at the end of this study, um, it came in as a full clinical study, but also as a food evaluation as opposed to a drug trial. And the difference between uh, being a food evaluation and a drug trial was that as soon as they had the result, the medical team felt that they could let some information out early to say this is helping people with IBS and they should be allowed to get it because it's food and it's safe and there's no downside. So it's a very interesting position that we're in here. And uh, so th uh, the point is I can tell you the the nub of the result, although not the full scientific paper now, because when uh, the medical team were asked by uh, the Daily Mail in November, this is what uh, they told them, that they, 90 days would resolve IBS in patients. Uh, key thing is that um, it's safe. There's no negative downsides to our knowledge. Um, 
If I'm absolutely on honest with you, I had my first ever complaint uh, two or three weeks ago after three years of having it on the market, and that patient said it's given me a diarrhea and constipation. It seemed a bit contradictory, but I said fine. That's our only letter in the complaint file. I will tell you that um, when you take the product um, initially, uh, there is inclined to be a, a slight loosening of the stool. This is obviously brilliant if you've got uh, constipation-related um, uh, IBS, and uh, it, it will, the system will balance once, it's, once you've got a new flora in there, so that it actually shows that the system is working. So you're all different, and you all have to know how to use it and use your common sense. Click on. So in summary, it supports a range of symptoms, um, helps to balance the system, provides uh, support, and it's safe and natural. And uh, click on any. We've done all that a bit, really. And this is the little bit I clipped on the end for the study results. The study exceeded expectations. In fact, uh, the professor described the result to me as spectacular. I should tell you that for four months prior to the result, he was managing my expectations, pointing out to me that get, to get an IBS study result is nigh on impossible, and uh, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. And we've converted him. On a radio interview four, uh, six weeks ago, unbeknown to me, um, I was in the studio next door while he's been interviewed for BBC Radio, he said, the first time I'd heard it, that two years before he met me, he wrote a scientific paper saying probiotics won't work. And he admitted that on air and said, it's taken me a while, but I now understand it's the delivery system that counts. Um, so it's a statistically significant result. Uh, on the symptom severity score, when the male did their re research, they also phoned up um, Professor Worrell, who's at Manchester, and asked for his comment. It's there, as you can see. 50 point result is a statistically significant result, and we've got way beyond that. Click on any. So we've got further indications to work on, inflammatory bowel disease, diverticulitis, right up to date, two weeks ago, Another uh, one of the medical teams approached uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Bajansen and said, we'd like to use it in post bariatric surgery. And uh, they're going to run a fourth study because of bacterial overgrowth after that type of surgery to try and gain control of bacterial overgrowth. Um, the results uh, will be presented at Congress on the 22nd of May. We're packing our bags at the moment and preparing our stand. First show that we've been to uh, with medics. Uh, the medical team will present the science. We're hoping to have a live link so that you can um, see the prof um, presenting uh, in San Diego. If not, there'll be something put on the website, uh, a video, a bit of video footage of that. Um, and then the uh, same medical team said, would you register us for um, the UK equivalent? There's 15,000 delegates at that. It's a lot of doctors. Uh, it's going to be a busy week. Um, but uh, they said, could you also register us for the UK equivalent, which is about three or 4,000 gastroenterologists that turn up at what was the BSG, which is the British Society of Gastro Gastroenterology. It's now the DDF, which is Digestive Diseases Forum. And uh, they, we, we registered, and they not only accepted the science, they told us that we were in the top 10% of science presented this year, and we've been rosetted so that we're actually going into the delegates handbook as a must-see stand. So not bad for a food, eh? Okay, push on any. Last thing, need any help, call us. And if you trip onto the last one, always check how fit your probiotic is. Can it do what it says it, it, says it does? Hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.